Hi Warriors! Uh, this is Pastor Song Bei from Lighthouse Global. I'm just coming on live to uh, give you uh, give a brief explanation about what happened in Washington DC when I was there and uh, the opportunity that I had to sing some songs in the Lincoln Memorial. I will probably paste this short video uh, before the um, singing video that I did. Uh, if some of you saw my Facebook Live, um, I just happened to sing the national anthem and Battle Hymn of the Republic and uh, Amazing Grace. Um, it's like a seven minute video, but I felt the need to, uh, before I release it on YouTube, I felt the need to explain a little bit about that video. I will have another longer version of this idea of sanctified patriotism. So sanctified patriotism, that's the word that God gave me today. Um, but you know, I um, sang the National Anthem, the Lord's put it in my heart to sing it. And if you are somebody that knew me from South Korea, you may actually not even the South Koreans know this, but uh, when we do worship revolution conferences, I uh, used to lead worship with the National Anthem of South Korea. Did you know that the National Anthem of South Korea was written by um, a Christian uh, patriot of South Korea who actually uh, wrote it in New York City in a Methodist church across the street from Columbia University? Uh, we found the piano that he actually wrote it on. He's a Christian man who wrote the National Anthem. And uh, in the Korean, anyway, that's, that's not what I'm gonna get into. But I, I'm telling you about the sanctified patriotism. What had happened in Washington DC last weekend, I um, was doing you know, street worship at three o'clock on Sunday. The Lord showed me to do that. I was there to just pray for DC and the government and for people who work there, just to intercede. And uh, at three o'clock I was leading worship and I just had this glimpse of a revelation and a vision of the Lincoln Memorial, uh, that's where the uh, flow of justice and righteousness starts. And then I saw a straight line all the way to Washington Monument that goes all the way to Congress. And I felt that um, God was opening up a pathway and a highway of revival of waters and fire and the blood of Jesus to flow through, through the land of America. That's kind of the vision I had. And I felt like, you know what, I should come back here at midnight because I've been doing midnight revivals. If you have followed me, I've been doing midnight revivals at 12 o'clock at midnight. I would go to Times Square and preach on Facebook Live. And then we would, you know, do prophetic evangelism, pray for people in the streets. And uh, I just felt like I needed to come back to Lincoln Memorial at midnight. I had no idea like what to expect. So I came back to Lincoln Memorial at midnight on Sunday night. So Monday, zero, 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 zero. Monday night. And um, uh, one of the other couples said they'll come and join me, but I went and I, as I walked up the steps, I saw like six or seven people who had police, uh, who looked like they were policemen or security guards, and, uh, and no, one, no one else was there at midnight. So then I asked them, I, I approached them and I said, what are you doing here? And they said, uh, we work here. And I was like, whoops, I'm sorry <laughs> to ask you that. They're probably wondering what I'm doing there. <laughs> But um, then I started preaching for about 30 minutes, 40 minutes. You should probably uh, watch that video. It's, it was uh, revelatory as I spoke those words. So it's very good, I was preaching. And then at the, end of, at the end of this broadcast, I felt led to sing a worship song, but I was being very shy about it because I wasn't sure. I looked at the sign that says, don't make any noise, be quiet. So then, um, you know, I was trying to be quiet, but then I sang, sang, a, sang a song, very simple song of worship and it rang all, all in the Lincoln Memorial. The acoustics were just fantastic. And people outside were listening, more people came. And I backed off because I saw people watching me and I, I thought that I was in trouble. And this big man started pointing his finger at me and I thought he meant get off, you know, get off the property, be quiet. He started pointing his finger at me and I was like, I wonder why, am I in trouble? And then he was, he was actually pointing to my guitar that was on the side and he said, go play the guitar, sing some more. So then I was asked to sing some more. He just wanted to hear me play the guitar and sing. And so I told him I'll do that. And then it became like this mini concert and I sat down and I just felt like, okay, I need to sing the national anthem. So I sang the national anthem of the United States of America. And I, before I release this video, I wanna tell you about why I feel led to do this is because of this. It's the belief in theology that I have. The Lord's been telling me to tell you, Americans, especially in this season, and if you're in a different country, for you as well, to love your nation, love your nation. And this is what I am like holding on to in this season. It's Martin Luther King Jr. Um, and uh, it says, 
love your nation, love, love your nation, justice, true justice for all, and peace, choose peace, because you are empowered to choose peace. So this is kind of the theme the Lord's given me. I'm going to spread it to people who are around me. But this idea of loving your nation, this is very different from what people call like nationalism, which tends to be associated with national pride, human, but that's based on human pride that we feel like we're better than you. Um, my nation is superior than you, so I can conquer you, that type of thing. That's not what I'm talking about. Um, that's not what I'm talking about. And I will have a longer version of this word later, but today I'm going to try to do a brief version of why I sang the National Anthem. Well, I think you should have reinterpretation of your National Anthem and pray intercede for your country as you sing it. Is this belief and theology of this? Number one, that God created nations, ethnic groups, and tribes. That God is the one who created different ethnic groups and tribes. In Book of Revelation, as you know, Revelation 7, 9, when you go to heaven, what happens? Does God destroy all the nations? When we enter heaven, do we become spirit beings and then we forget about the nations? We forget about the tribes? No, when we enter heaven, St. John saw that in Revelation 7, 9, that as, as I looked, there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the throne and before the Lamb. So God allowed every nation and tribe and people and language to stand before for the throne of, of the Lamb. And uh, they were wearing white clothes, but every nation was represented, which tells me that the uniqueness of, of every nation and ethnic group means something to heaven, that God, it's part of a beautiful creation, a symphony of God's creation, that he is the one that initiated the ethnic groups. I know this sounds so simple, but the theology is that God created nations, ethnic groups, and tribes. Number two, God created these different nations with a call and a divine purpose for each nation. So that every nation, every ethnic group has a purpose, just like how every person has a destiny and a purpose. There's a purpose and a destiny for a nation. When God births a nation, there's a divine purpose in why he created a nation. So I've been breathing purpose into the land of America and saying that you are an apostolic nation. You're a nation with a purpose. That's the whole theme of my life in this season is that God keeps telling me to study George Washington. On my way back from Washington DC on this trip, we ended up staying at near Valley Forge for two nights. Did you guys know, we? it was by accident that I stayed there for two nights, something happened. But when I was staying in King of Prussia where there was an inn where George Washington was there and he was in Valley Forge, I think that's where he, he apparently had a vision and a revelation about uh, about American uh, Americans winning the war, and and then that's where um, the American ar idea of American army kind of came forth. So I was there for two nights, birthing an army of the Lord for America. God is calling Americans to be birthed as an army of the Lord, a spiritual army of the Lord in this hour. But there is a call and a divine purpose, and a lot of times this calling and divine purpose is also prophetically sung in the national anthems without people knowing it. National Anthem normally contains something, a, a key of some sort that defines um, defines a kind of uh, uh, calling that God has. And, and your National Anthem, America, it was birthed in a vicious war where British were trying to kill you and get you to give up. But it's a song about battling till the end to keep your independence. It's a, it's a war cry. Your national anthem is a war cry. And I want to bring remind you of that in this season. And, and number three, the theology is that we are to thank God for the nationality God has put on us and to respond to God's call as an ethnic people group. We are to thank God for the nationality that God has given us. So, and, and see it from that perspective, that it is from God himself that put on that ethnic um, identity, that national entity identity. Sanctified patriotism is, we love our country because God created it. We love our country as a divine mandate because God sent us here, brought us here, take care, and we are to take care of the nation that God has sent us to and walk in the national calling because it is of God, from God. God positioned you in your land and situated you in your nation. And you are to take care of it. That is the mandate. Amen? 
In the past, every freedom fighter movement that I know of in every country was divinely inspired by the Holy Spirit. It's a lot of the Christians who were, uh, have faith in Jesus Christ who were inspired by the Spirit of God that um, were at the forefront of independence movement. Koreans who fought for the independence of Korea from the Japanese people were Christians, devout Christians. Um, I'm, I can't talk too much. I can preach for like an hour on this. But uh, I just want you to, I just want to encourage you uh, that uh, the reason why I sang the National Anthem in the Lincoln Memorial was to uh, encourage and prophetically declare a war cry, to revive your war cry, America, to fight, to sing a new song of your nation rising up again, to not give up on your flag, to preserve your land because God has called you here, that you are to walk in sanctified patriotism in Jesus' mighty name. <laughs> so that was really my heart of singing it. And I'm not sure if I do a good job, but you know, I sang it in some of the street worship. I'm gonna to try to sing more to get you all to sing it together as an intercessory prayer to the Lord to revive America and re to get America back into the destiny and the calling that God has for her in Jesus' mighty name. That will lead us to victory in anything that the devil's against, the United States of America. So God bless you. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you feel led, please share. It's a little embarrassing for me, but leave it up to the Lord. God bless you. Bye.